Hey guys, we're gonna do something a little different today. I have a ton of freaking footage for this Volvo, but I'm way, way, way freaking behind on uploading content to YouTube for you, okay? Just crazy behind on it. And I'm so very, very thankful that you're even watching today, uh, but I really need to get you caught up to where I'm at right now. I mean, as of right now, you'll see right behind me, I'm polishing this thing, okay? I'm polishing it. So I'm trying to get done by Christmas. Right now, it is October, and i still working on footage for you from freaking August. Can you believe that? That's insane. So I've got a ton of freaking footage that I need to get up. And uh, today's Sunday, and I'm thinking that maybe possibly if I'm not working I may do it anyways I may just take the time to do it but every Sunday once a week if you'll tune in I may put up a video every Sunday I'm not gonna guarantee that my ADHD may want me to do something else but I'm gonna try to get a video up every Sunday sometime on Sunday so you can enjoy it on Monday morning on your way to work or when you get to work or when you lunch break or whatever so you can enjoy the content but um just excuse this video this video is going to be a ton of freaking talking because i got to get you caught up there's some stuff that i've been working on that i haven't been videoing because I'm, i've just been just welcome back to legs Eye performance Got some parts. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, trash, of course. Always freaking trash. Windshield washer nozzles. Yay, because I have tried to safely remove no less than three pairs of those windshield wiper nozzles and every single time these little plastic tabs freaking break off every time. I've tried on the 09, I've tried on 07, I've tried on a, I've, every model just about that I've touched. I've tried to get these washer nozzles because they're still placed perfectly neat on uh, that car and I start to try to pull it out and I even get underneath and I press the little tabs and they still break off. So, what's next? What else we got in here? Acorn nuts. Do you know what these are? Do you have a clue what these are for? Drop your comments down below. Tell me what you think these are for. I'll show you later. Next box. Let's look in here. What do you think this is in here? What's this? Hmm. Let me think for a minute. Yup, yup, yup. Okay, it's coming back to me, coming back to me. From uh, the good old FCP Euro right here. This, these things came from, came from IPD. These things right here, this little hardware. Besides what you see down on the bottom, because I've been using it as a little junk box, right? So this hardware here is actually a kit. FCP cells. Supposedly it's a factory Volvo part number for this kit. Goes to that. Do you know what this is? I pulled, guys, I found this thing right here underneath the 2009 S40 that I found over in Louisiana by accident. And it's actually an R design 2009, but it's white. And I pulled the hood off of it too, as you can see there, because I needed hinges. Because as, uh, as you've probably seen from my R design, is it's been pretty beat up. Look at this. I mean, I don't know if I can get this out. I'm going to try to heat this up, and I'm going to try to fix it the best I can, right? So, you know, and it doesn't really fit that great. I don't know why. You know, I've re-cleared the headlights here. They look phenomenal. I've got to try to find a grill. As you can see here, this is not the model year uh, correct Volvo emblem 
for this car because this, folks, is actually a facelifted Volvo S40 because this is a 2009. So what you see is different headlights, different front bumper, different grille, and since this is an R design, you get the ground effects, which you can see I've already kind of repaired down there. And you get the little logo here that's all faded out, which I can find. And uh, I'm not sure if this one is or not, but the ones I've seen online, they're about $35, and they're metal. I don't know if this one's metal, but it's too much of a pain to get off right at this point. And I didn't really want to mess with it until I got the parts. That's kind of how I operate. But as you can see, this thing has been well beat up. There's tabs broken around the top edge. It's supposed to fit sort of like this. <laughs> it's even popping with me uh, pressing and pulling on it. It's got a little crack in it here. But the, all the ones that I've seen, this grill, uh, are all chrome. This grill is all chrome in every model except for the R design. So I cannot find this grill anywhere. I have found every one of the other models from the 2008 and up to uh, 2008 and a half to 2011 S40s all have chrome. Every one of them on eBay that I could find. I might be able to find them on car-parts.com, but I haven't been able to look yet. So, still got to have a grill. But what I might be able to do is if I can find a 2008 and a half to a 2011 front S40 grill, I might be able to just keep this surround because this little crack here is really not that noticeable. So I might be able to just keep this surround, but then place the R design logo since it has this little clip on the back side of it that clips onto the the grill i believe that this piece here is universal between all the models so if that's the case i might be able to buy a grill for about 100 bucks on ebay which is too much for me but i might bite the bullet and do it and i may be able to take the surround the chrome surround off replace it with this one then add the brand new art design logo as well as a brand new or maybe the eBay unit will have a good Volvo emblem with the horizontal trim piece already attached. This one is just double stick tape for now. I know if you recall from the uh, some of the pictures and videos of this car originally when I picked it up from Copart earlier this year, You'll notice that it had the larger Volvo emblem on it, which is not the period correct emblem for this car. They didn't start putting the larger logo on the front here until 2010, I believe. And this is an 09. So it had the wrong emblem. And whoever the retard is had this car prior to me or prior to that person because I think the last owner was a female. This car got sold as a title. Uh, it was a. It was. A, it was sold to like a title pawn shop um, for very little money because it wasn't running and it had flood damaged, moldy interior with bio and whatnot. And but someone at some point in time put after they crashed it. Obviously, they messed the bumper up. You know, mostly on this passenger side. But after they messed this front front bumper and grill up, they. Um, Stuck that big logo on there, I guess, to kind of hide some of this damage on there. And they stuck it on there with a gray uh, uh, gutter sealant on the back. It was flexible. I mean, I just grabbed the logo, and it was wobbly, and I just pulled it off. And I'm like, ooh, that's before I knew that it wasn't the correct logo that or emblem that goes on here, right? So, yeah. But cool part about it is this thing still has the OEM factory bumper on it. 450740 is the last six digits of my VIN number on this car. Same as the hood. So the hood is actually still the OEM hood. I hate it that I'm going to swap that out. And I hate it that if I can't fix this front clip that I'm going to have to find another one. That kind of sucks. But I did find a hood. This hood is immaculate. The car that I found in Louisiana is an R-Design 
and it only has 109,000 miles, just over 100,000 miles. And you can tell this thing is in great, great shape. So back to the skid plate that goes underneath this car, that was just laying on the ground. Somebody had pulled the AC compressor off of the Artisan over there in that uh, pull apart lot. And when they were pulling it, they used this to lay on. Um, they didn't really damage it any further. This is a pretty thick piece of plastic. You can tell that th that car kind of rubbed on the ground occasionally. It's got a small little crack in it right here, but overall, I don't care. I think it's immaculate because a new one from Volvo is, is a couple hundred bucks for that. So I was happy to pay like 15 bucks for a hardware kit to attach this skid plate to my Volvo. So now what's really cool is I think what's going to happen, or at least what I'm hoping is going to happen, because this S40 uh, design of mine has a pretty good leak under it. Uh, oil leak it is leaking from what I would call a rear main cell seal but uh, I guess it's a side main seal I don't know because it's a laterally mounted engine but the seal on the crankshaft between the engine and transmission is leaking and no good I assume this probably had some kind of a PCV issue because it has the updated version of the PCV system in there already and it looks fairly newer so looks newer than the rest of the engine did i mean this engine bay right here i obviously looks way better than it did when i got it it was caked caked on with grease and sludge and stuff flying up everywhere it's just stupid i've done a ton of cleaning on this car as as you can see also what i've done is i already replaced this pain in the neck, which uh, requires you to completely loosen the radiator support and pull the radiator support actually up off the top of the radiator uh, in the mounting locations. You have to pull the fenders loose, both sides, pull that radiator support out for you to be able to get this in and out. This intake box does not come in and out without removing the radiator support itself okay so keep that in mind if you ever get one of these p1s or p2s i believe have the same air box on the t5 engine which is the inline five turbo five cylinder engine okay that's pretty cool now also another thing that i found is the battery cover um you know originally i did find on the 07 out of Mobile, I did find the uh, the front piece that goes here. Just pull out on the sides on this battery back box cover. And I did originally find this piece. This piece was missing, and this piece was missing on this car when I bought it. This is original, the battery hold down. I actually cleaned it up and put it back in, and it reinstalled it. And I actually put a new nut on it, because everything was pretty rusty under here. And, you know, I... I had to drill out the screws that hold in the original battery box. I found a battery box in this piece at a pull apart and I replaced them, but unfortunately this was already missing. So I found this piece just recently um, at the, on the R design in Louisiana, I actually finally found that piece, which I was totally stoked about. I was also stoked that this was still on it. All of this was still intact with all of the clamps, hardware and all. Uh, but unfortunately, it was missing these two pieces right here. It was missing this coupler. And it was missing this elbow that goes down to where the air intake is through the grill. It goes in, it catches, goes in through the filter and then into the engine. So it looks awesome and almost OEM now. <clears throat> And the other thing that I did just yesterday because I was just kind of piddling around was this piece right here. My original piece is here. And uh, it's in just poor shape. I mean, if you look at it here, it's missing a whole section on it right there. Uh, the sticker came off while I was washing the engine. Uh, that part is busted there. I mean, it's just in rough shape, right? That part's split. Um... You know, it's just trash. 
but the but the art design over there just had a little fender bender right here in this area and it did not hurt this piece except for the fact that as usual this little tab is cracked just exactly like um, my original one and every other one that I've seen this tab is cracked so so that covers the skip plate and I kind of give you an overview is uh, the other thing I got from uh, IPD was they sell these bags of bulbs which is really cool this is a bag so these are the old ones okay but the uh, IPD bulb set that I got that I received was a this bag and it had bulbs in it just like this uh, a bunch of these are pretty new because I did go to advanced auto parts and I bought all the bulbs that I thought I needed but you can see there's a gold base one right there and there's one more older one in here that I uh, advanced or O'Reilly's and all did not have enough bulbs at that day which was really odd to me that they don't carry enough bulbs to do two sets of tail lights but I went to replace every light bulb in the tail lights and I was missing two bulbs because that they just didn't have enough. So uh, I actually was looking the other day and one of those bulbs that I reused actually had gone bad. So, so what I did was, uh, since IPD sells these kits right here, just a bulb kit for both tail lights, all in the same bag. I went and ordered one, it's very cheap. So I went and got it, it's way cheaper than buying all the bulbs in pairs. So got it and uh, installed them. So now all of the tail lights work properly. So that's that. The next thing I got was uh, from this this company, Clips, ClipsandFasteners.com, Inc. out of Anaheim, California. Okay, and I got a few things. I spent sixty-one dollars and forty-eight cents. I bought Volvo Specialty Rocker Panel Molding Clips, three one two one four four nine six. That right there is a game changer for me because I took the passenger side uh, ground effect, side skirt, whatever, off, and I broke a few of these because I really didn't know how they work. So trying trying to figure it out, and I broke some of them and needed some. So then the uh, next thing I got was the rocker panel retainer, 16 millimeter, um, and you know I. That also was another thing on the uh, rocker panels or those side skirts is you got to have those because when you pop out the center part, you cannot retrieve the center pins that, were, that was in it. Once you punch them through, it goes into the body and that's welded together. So there's going to be like this lifelong rattle inside that rocker panel now because you can't retrieve these. So then I got also the Volvo bumper cover retainers that goes along the top edge of the bumper here, underneath the hood, and I got a box of those. And then I also got a shield retainer assortment because I've been missing just a shield here and there. Like for the uh, cowl cover under the windshield wipers, I'm missing a little shield retainer for that one. I'm not even sure it's supposed to be a shield retainer, but whatever, it is what it is. Pretty cool. I. I had gone to uh, fasten a few months ago and I needed some little trim screws when I was replacing the cover on my F-150 um, it's an XLT and it has the front bench seat and so it has a cloth covered center console so I needed some little screws I went to fasten all this is the brand trim screws that they carry that was really cool so um, when I got these in I opened the box I'm like oh crap that's neat so yeah I got these uh, boxes of I mean this this is really awesome. I mean this is just really awesome. Look, I got a whole box of those things and it's so cheap. And uh, if I bought these from Volvo, you know, tell him what this would cost. So got those. I got these uh, pin type. I don't know which ones these are. These are for the rocker panels. For says 94 on. And uh, you can see they're a little bit fatter. We got the little stubby little pin in it which is perfect. It's almost identical to the OEM ones, if not the same. And then these are for the top of the bumper. And uh, same deal here, very high quality. I like this brand. I mean, these are, these are phenomenal. I mean, this is awesome. I mean, they look exactly, almost identical to the factory ones. These are a little bit skinnier than the other ones, you know. So that's that. 
And then I got this uh, shield retainer assortment, which is really awesome. It comes in this nice plastic kit, and then you open it up, and look at this, guys. Look at this. This is cool. I mean, it even tells you uh, what size hole, tells you what panels, si uh, thicknesses, range it could hold. You know, that that is awesome. I mean, really and truly awesome. You get these tiny ones to the big mama monster ones right here, okay? That is awesome. I mean, I don't know how many of these I've needed, but I've needed a bunch, and here we go. So the other stuff that, you know, I think I've showed you already, but I've got a here corner there. There's some miscellaneous parts in here. I think there might be a couple of things in there that needs to come out. I'm just kind of using that. And I know it's a Christmas tote, I know, from Walmart. But I had an extra empty one, and it looked good to place bags of parts in. Because, you know, I bag every freaking thing and try to label it, but I bag, at least bag. And you can see, like, there's a whole tote of bagged items right there. A lot of things I need to put up for sale. But yeah, you got that. So the next thing I got is the skid plate, the hood. I got these side curtain airbags from the Artisan. Uh, that's trash. I got the floor mats, which I have pressure washed and I did purple power and uh, pressure washer and they look awesome in comparison to what they look like. Although I was just moving them because they're a little bit damp right on the bottom corner where I had them hanging up and uh, laid them out here try to see if they'll dry a little more and when i picked one up i just i smelled it and it smelled a little funky so kind of smelled like uh cat pee or or cat urine i guess dog urine something like that so i'm going to get my carpet cleaner out and i'm going to extract because you can still kind of see a little bit where there's kind of a staining on there a stain on the up pasture side one the two back ones look okay, but I'm still going to extract on those and try to get as much of that out and make them look new again. The original ones in this car looked hideous. I threw them immediately away. They were moldy, nasty, soaking wet. I threw them right away, so they were gone. So the next thing I got uh, from the yard design over there, the, the one I uh, pulled apart, I wound up uh, pulling the climate control module because mine has like a couple little dents in the little corner and this one was in great shape so I went in and just pulled that. Uh, Volvo is real finicky with changing modules like this so that climate control module may not actually work but mine is good, it works great now that I got the computer back for it where everything works perfectly fine so uh, chances are that climate control module in there will probably get sold with the dented aluminum or metal unit that I have in my car now I may get sold so I got the uh, artisan steering wheel which means I'll be putting mine up for sale um, I have mine installed with a good airbag but when I saw this one I just had to have it because I mean the Volvo logo looks awesome and then you go down here and look at the artisan and it looks awesome as well I mean, it's still kind of tell what it is. It's a little shiny, but I think mine was too when I first got it. The other part too is uh, this has controls on the back side, uh, one side. So over here, there's controls. So there's a back inner, like a little control here. So there's controls on there, and I'll show you why in a minute. This is my original amp. The the housing for it actually. I actually took this out of the the housing because it was so rusted so corroded that I was concerned that this thing might be bad but after I took it apart the boards actually really good it's the housing itself that was really terrible looking still looks terrible and I'm still not going to use it so I wound up getting the unit out of the uh, pull apart unit uh, car and installing it and it works perfect so that's awesome uh, this is the LCD screen out of the pull apart unit. I think the dealer will have to program this, so I'm not sure when I'll be able to install that, but mine has like uh, some pixels missing, so I really want to swap it out. I think I forgot to put these in. I think these go by behind the fenders or underneath the hood, so I've got to put those in back in eventually. 
I got a bunch of parts in here. These are for uh, the seats and also got the sunroof uh, weather stripping right here that's in great shape. So I got all those parts under here. Oh, I also got the seat belts because as you know, mine were all corroded. I've basically had to have every new interior part. And Louisiana still allows you to purchase seat belts and airbags, so I was able to get them. I actually got the CEM out of the R design. And so I know obviously I can't use it, but I can sell it for a profit make some money back on this car that I've spent way too much money on. Here's a hint for the other stuff I'm gonna show you. Here's a uh, gas pedal, which I'm gonna sell for from the 08. And then here is an Artisan pedal. Mine was pretty corroded. I actually took the unit apart right here. I took this unit apart, uh, this cover off, and I tried to clean it and lubricate it and all. And it's just kind of sticky. Like when you push it, it kind of, jumps when you push it it doesn't go down like smooth up and down or smoothly it's kind of like jumps around like creaks it's really odd feeling so i i really want to see if this unit works without programming it um i'm hoping that it's just a, like a hot swap deal where i can unplug the battery remove the old one put in this one it's a lot newer and uh like 120,000 miles newer and um, I'll plug it back in, hook the battery back up, and I'm hoping everything works perfectly. We'll see. This little bag of goodies here is the top of the steering wheel or steering column cover. If mine has two holes here where some retard tried to put a tachometer or something on the car. I don't know. Uh, I got the shift knob, which actually, which actually has also the little piece that's broken on mine, which is the uh, little ring at the bottom here, it's broken. Also, this piece here, on every one of them that I've seen for this part, let me try to get it out here. Hold on. Every one of these that I've seen, every one of these plates, in all the pull-aparts that I've seen, this little cover right here is broken off, like half broken off. Mine's even broken half off. But this one's still in decent shape. It opens and closes freely. I mean, that's what I was looking for, and I found it, and I got it. So I didn't, they really just gave it to me. They really didn't charge me anything for it. So, so yeah, I got that, um, you know, the steering wheel column cover without holes, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. So, okay, okay. I got I to gotta show you one other thing before I show you anything else in here. Anyways, here's the shift knob for the R design as the little silver bezel on the top. You know, works like so. You know, everything's good. And looking under here, I've got the side bolsters for the ha, hint, hint, back seats that uh, I got to clean up still. Uh, then there's some miscellaneous parts where I had the dash apart, uh, trying to resolve the computer issue when the computer came in from Sweden and it wasn't working. I had that dash like mostly apart, so. And you've probably seen this already, but check it out. I went ahead and I pulled the entire dash assembly out of that car. And I don't know if you know anything about these P1s at all, but what I'll tell you is very few of them have this option here. So this must have been a well-equipped s40 r design back in the day for 2009 and if you don't know what this puppy is right here this is the factory navigation unit okay so uh what i found is for for all the parts that i needed the dash pad itself was this is like a 30 dollar part at a pull apart for just the dash pad and then i also needed a couple other little miscellaneous parts like this little this little uh, turn thing right here is kind of not working great on mine, which seems to be very similar to this, but there was other parts that I needed. And I also, um, instead of pulling those parts individually and paying more um, for just the parts I needed, I was, uh, an entire dash assembly is about $48 for the entire dash assembly. That's the frame, 
That's all, everything that's attached to the dash itself is a dash assembly, less than 50 bucks for the entire bit of it, okay? Entire. <laughs> so it's a no brainer to just go ahead and get the whole freaking thing. And what I get with this is some sticky knobs, okay? <laughs> Uh, but look at this guys. This thing is complete. All of the wiring has never been wet. It doesn't stink. Nothing. I don't have to try to reuse my original one. Everything's intact as you can see here. So there's all the wiring. Okay. Uh, lighting control controls. If I, um, I can't use these, this one particularly, but this one's fairly rare because that R design actually had the these smart headlights uh, which shifted as you turn the steering wheel it had these little modules that would turn the headlights and it had HI, factory HID headlights it also I have the cluster here the ignition switch the CD changer under there along with all the wiring there and I already got the LCD screen that goes below that um, you know that navigation unit the center channel speaker so all of those things, and then you see that there's additional wiring back here. So that part goes to the back, that goes to the back, some grounds that goes in the passenger side footwell. But then also, if I tilt this up a little bit, let's see if I can tilt this up. This is a heavy monster. You should have seen my little scrawny butt trying to get this thing out. There's also some wiring under, under here because I, oh God, hang on. I went ahead and got the wiring for the roof uh because uh i think i think i had like a broken connector for the antenna or something i can't remember what it was but i went ahead and grabbed the roof wiring harness as well um you know the original overhead light was actually in kind of bad shape so i figured there's probably a little bit of corrosion in that in that wiring harness i may go back because i'm going to go back and get the engine out of that car engine and trans because it actually only has 109,000 miles. So I'm almost obligated to get it. So that's gonna happen. But also the other thing I needed was the passenger side airbags. So you can see it's intact, everything's perfect there. And then this, is this the uh, navigation unit disc player? I think, pretty sure it is. It says ECU assembly. I don't know what the heck that means. I don't know. But anyways, it's a disc player of some sort. Pretty sure it goes to the navigation unit. And then the other part, too, that I realized while I was getting this dash out, since I had the navi unit, I realized it had this gray cable in here, as you can see. And what that cable is is your USB connection. Because, yes, folks, this car had a USB connection in the, in the console, and I got those parts. I went ahead and said, let me just get the dash with all the parts that I need to do USB in this car because that's the one thing that it lacks is the ability, it, it has Bluetooth in this car, but it does not have the ability to play music over Bluetooth. So you have to have the USB option. You have to have this, which is a little module somewhere in here in this dash and this cable that goes to the console into the little flip up console and you get a USB port along with three and a half millimeter audio. So now you can actually plug in a USB connection to your iPhone and play music over this awesome Don audio sound. The only thing I don't have and I didn't have time to get, which I could still get if I want it is the body harness that runs along the uh, inside of the car. I can still get that piece. Although someone took the tail lights and the wiring harnesses, uh, from that car and so they just cut the wiring harnesses off So I wasn't really wanting to get that harness even I mean because I believe mine is identical to it um, Except for a couple little things actually I think it is identical So with that being said if it's identical then really all I got to do is put this new dash in and Call it a day now there was one little damaged piece section here, which was this right here I don't know what these little dimples are about, but considering the fact that I paid less than 50 bucks for this entire assembly, <laughs> I mean, it's, 
impossible for me to not uh, use it. So um, instead of buying a $200 dash pad that's the same color, because as you notice, mine's the wrong color because that's the only one I could find at the time. I bought that whole dash assembly for $75 and I basically tossed the OEM one. I tossed it, it's gone. So the next thing I need to be working on uh, today is I need to work on this wire harness. If you don't know what harness this is, this is the trunk lid harness. This is the one that controls your license plate lights, uh, whether your trunk is open or closed. It's your remote release for your trunk hatch. It's all of those things. So that unit is, uh, I keep getting a warning that the trunk is open, but the trunk is not open, okay? And it just kind of off and on finicky, which tells me it's kind of like a wire issue. So then I was looking through uh, the forums, trying to figure out what it is, and everybody kept saying that it was uh, cracked, dry rotted wiring. And that seems to be kind of a trend with Volvo. Uh, with especially with their headlights, you know, because I repaired my headlights. But I was looking through this and see if I can find it somewhere on here. Can't remember which end it's on. Maybe over here. Yeah, I think it's right here. So right here, I realized. Not really is it dry rotted, more than it's just cut. So there's like some little nicks and cuts right here on this wire. Also again right here, oh, can you see here, all these wires right here are here kind of kinked a little bit. See that's the, it's kind of weird. This is, this is where it goes around into the hole and kind of goes up over the top. And then this plug plugs in on the inside on the top of the rear parcel shelf. But that being against that metal, I mean, it's like all these wires right here are messed up right here. And I think what was happening was some of these wires were grounding out on that steel of the rear parcel shelf. Um, so basically all I need to do is just take this harness and just refurbish it. I want to uh, fix the... Uh, Fix these little wires on here and make sure they're all okay and then just reinstall the unit and then just test it make sure everything's fine so that's what that is then the next to the last thing that i can show you is look i have a full trunk i have an entire trunk now it's all in here it's all in here it is so cool looking i even have let me give you a maybe a peek under here look at that I even have a spare tire, and it's in good shape. It looks brand new, along with the center bolt with plastic retainer. It's all in there. I have a lug wrench and some extra hardware for the tool kit, which I do not have. I've got to find a tool kit for it, uh, but I don't have that yet. There's some residual foam from the jackass that had this car before. and put foam all over this car, all up inside here. foam all here. You can fill down in here. Foam, foam everywhere. Foam, 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 foam. Lots of foam. So obviously there was a system in the trunk, and I think that could be part of the reason why uh, with the wire, the wires, you can see kind of where it ran because that one broke. It ran up over this edge right here, and when it runs up over that edge and plugs into that plug is where it was kind of cut, and I think that the whatever box uh, that person had, the jackass, had in here, you can tell it was kind of rubbing here. And rubbing here and rubbing along the back side so I think it was all the way up so high that it was rubbing against these wires and and basically caused the steel to uh, rub into them I mean you can kind of see it I mean you see where it was rubbing all across the whole back I mean oh like kind of like rub the paint off literally that's insane so retard you know, and there was foam all on the back side of this. You know, I had to sand this kind of down a little bit. And then, I, you know, I, spray, I sprayed all this in with the factory metallic silver color. So all this is a, you can kind of see a paint line a little bit. This is not cleared. So it's kind of, well, I don't, I don't even think it's a good match. But I just told him, I said, I want something, make me something cheap that I can just cover with. That way nothing rusts or anything. YouTube, enjoy this five-minute time lapse of me disassembling 
this interior for the 500th time. hustling trying to get this freaking thing done by Christmas okay I mean it's almost I think I got this thing what January or first or first week of first or second week maybe in the first week of February <laughs> <laughs> see you later <laughs>